ambulance services are patient breathing. Every year in Britain, 12 million people dial 999 for an emergency ambulance. More than 3,000 a day in the West Midlands. Right, stop screaming and listen to me. Listen, don't be afraid to push too hard. One and two and three. One and two. CPR in progress. Everyone clear? Each call tells the story of a person in desperate need. You upgraded to a red place who's been badly beaten. Do you know what it was you were stabbed with, Dom? And with call numbers doubling in the last decade. Go in, it's here, the head's here, the head's here, Neely. Yeah. I can't. You can! For our public services, a situation that is now critical. They've got to find somewhere for them. They can't just say there's no beds. Is this literally what you've got, what you're standing up in? Got nothing else? OK. The failure of the system. Oh, God. Oh, oh my God. What was he doing? Hey. All right, guys, just, just one minute. Cameras follow cases as they unfold, minute by minute. Two ambulances, please, if possible. OK, yeah, as long as you're all right, I'll get everybody to you as quickly as I can. In the control room... Confirmed life extinct. Oh, man. And on the ground... Sorry for your loss. ..as the West Midlands Ambulance Service race to save lives. They are coming to you, blue lights and sirens, as fast as they possibly can. If you're breathing... Can you see the helicopter? Well, you're no trouble, honestly. Everybody needs help sometimes, don't they? This is the story behind the silence. Get out of the way. I'm driving. Hello, Rambo. How can you help? Ambulance, uh, please see. Clear as the possible fate of RTC, please. Do you know male or female? Do we know? Not female, like 23. And uh, when she had a possible fate of what the caller said? Yeah, I think she's dead. Hi, Dr. Sano. It's RETA. It's 30. That's 3 zero minutes over. Saturday, two hours into the night shift, an emergency doctor, Richard, and critical care paramedic, Kerry, have been given their third job from the control room. They're part of the merit team, a specialist resource reserved for the most serious cases. It's a, a driver vehicle, single car, has ended up in a ditch somehow. Um, female driver reports there's significant injuries and unconscious. The car crash is in a rural location in South Warwickshire. In addition to Richard and Kerry in the Merrick car, a paramedic officer has also been dispatched. An ambulance and two critical care paramedics from the Air Ambulance night team are already on scene. I've had injury, classified it, surgical emphysema. Uh, the Merrick team are still required. What did that all receive? 23 minutes later, Richard and Kerry arrive at the incident. No, no, it's a scene of it, obviously. Arrived the mode, activated. Where's the ambulance? Just Is there. the ambulance at the top? It's gone. It's just gone. It's just gone? Yeah, both of them have just gone. Okay. They just sounds in. No, no, go ahead. No, no, we're at scene, but uh, fire service tells us the ambulance has pulled off over. Ah, okay. I wasn't informed about that. Yes, I can see them now. Um, right, jump back in the car. I'll keep them on you again and they'll talk to you and... Um, Apologies. I wasn't aware. I haven't been told that... Uh, uh, they'd left soon. Thank you. It's not a fatal car crash, but a 17-year-old is severely injured. She has four paramedics and a technician with her, but no doctor, and the nearest hospital is 29 miles away. To save valuable minutes, the crews on scene have decided to start the journey by car and arrange a rendezvous point with the Merritt doctor on the way. Um, just carry on up to the A3400, uh, the crew parallel with you, um, north, so I'm just going to try and work out a place for you to stop. So I think when we get to the next junction that is left, that is A3400.
crew's here and the medics are here, so they're heading the same direction. They're going to come to there, but obviously we need to try and find somewhere appropriate for them to pull over. Five, three, um, when you go past the next junction on the left, uh, if you can find somewhere sensible to pull in, nine, eight, we'll meet you. Yeah, that's all good. No, no, carry on, carry on, carry on uh, to the end of there. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, right, they can see you, so uh, they'll be with you very, very shortly. Six. Yep. Right. Yep. Hiya, you are all right? Hiya. Hiya. Uh, so this is Anna, front seat passenger of a small house about it's 33. Awesome. All implants on her door, uh, so we're suspecting all left-sided injury. Obvious open head, uh, we've got obvious chest. And you've got everything set up? Yeah, I've Fine. got you some fentanyl, some uh, ketamine. I've got you a size yeah. 7 tube, a size 4 blade, uh, LMAs. Cool. Um, Anna? Anna, I'm one of the doctors. I'm just going to have a quick look at you, OK? OK, so to create a field central. So the surgeon can see him on both sides, isn't there, really? The patient, Anna, has a collapsed lung and is struggling to breathe. That's OK. Fine, so I'm just going to give her 50 marks of fentanyl. 2134. 2134. OK, give it a go. To maintain an open airway, she will need to be intubated under a general anaesthetic. This can only be done under the supervision of a doctor. Perfect, yeah. <laughs> So seven, is that right? Seven. 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 Yeah. In cases where there isn't time to get to hospital, merit team doctors can perform a range of surgical procedures at the roadside, from amputations to open heart surgery. Okay. Can you turn that gap over quickly? Listen. Definitely decrease on the left hand side. In the time the medical team have been working on Anna, the control room receives two more trauma calls. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? What it is, love, my heart's all right. Stabbed himself three times in his stomach. OK, and he's still got the knife, we think? I don't know, I haven't got a clue. OK. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? What? Patient breathing? It's about, yeah. Are you the patient? No, obviously not. Pardon? No! I can't hear what you're saying, caller. Um, oh, no! Okay, no. So what's, okay, so it's the patient breathing unconscious? He's been ripped with a hammer and stabbed in the back. So he's got a head injury and a back injury and he's been stabbed, yeah? Yeah. Richard and Kerry are the only doctor led crew on duty tonight. They're still busy treating their car crash patient and so are unable to attend any of the new trauma calls. Right, sorry, move that. 17 year old Anna has been successfully anaesthetised. Dr. Richard can now address her breathing problems. He must immediately perform a surgical procedure to release the air outside her collapsed lung to allow it to reinflate. Right, go, go down, Jenny. I'm just going to pass that back yep. through. There There's go. that. Let's watch that finger. <laughs> Cut through. Yeah. There you go. Release that. Yeah. So, potentially that's coaching me in the floor, actually, because yeah? we're giving positive pressure ventilation. So, so, so the lung is down. Yeah, just so I'm listening, and then we'll go on to that afterwards, yeah. Cheers, mate. Air entry. Air entry. That's my seven. More air entry than there was. Right, okay, 6951 blood pressure. <laughs> okay, so let's have a quick recap then before we move. So, airway we're happy with, yeah. chest we're dealt with, ventilating better, sats are fine. 
Okay, so extending anaesthesia, so we'll give her two of uh, morphine in a bit once the blood pressure settled down. Okay. And we'll start getting ready to go, shall we? With the life-saving procedure successfully completed, Anna will now be taken to Coventry Hospital for a full CT scan and assessment of her injuries. Is this the patient breathing? Well... Hello, are you the patient? I suppose so, yeah. OK, and what's happened then? Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm in a bad way. I'm, I'm sat on my window like, and I'm thinking about jumping head first. OK, well, well, talk to me first. OK, let, let's keep talking. And what's your name, my love? My name is Sam. OK. <laughs> Oh, I'm having a fucking breakdown. Oh, I just need help. I understand. We are coming as fast as we can. It's the easiest thing for me to do is just jump. There are 25 call handlers on shift tonight, and they'll take up to 1,200 calls between them. Sally is taking a call from somebody reporting an overdose north of Birmingham. What's the main reason for the call? It's my boyfriend. Your boyfriend, OK. He's just covered from what I can do. Take an overdose. Well, I'm not having a panic attack. I'm having a panic attack. I'm not having a panic attack. I'm not having a panic attack. I'm not having a panic attack. All right. Try and stay nice and calm for me, my darling. OK, we're getting some help arranged. Listen, what's going on there? <laughs> What's happening there? Louise is a controller, dispatching ambulances in the area the two potential suicide calls are located. OK, thank you. It's her job to prioritise the calls and dispatch ambulance crews to attend. 4336, a 22-year-old male taken an overdose, approximately 50 tablets. There's lots of shouting in the background. Can you give us an early update from scene, please? Okay, you all need to stay calm. You all need to stay calm. Can you get the tablets from him? He hasn't got them at the moment. He hasn't got them. Where are the tablets now? In the corner. Should he go? Um, I think he might be having some kind of heart. The ambulances are on their way, but two high priority calls have come in. A patient with chest pain. Yeah, he's conscious, but he's very, he's shaking a lot. And another with suspected sepsis. Both crews are diverted to the new jobs, leaving Sally's overdose patient and Sam, the man on the ledge, still waiting for help. Louise calls him back to check the ongoing situation. Hello, is that Sam? It is. Hello, it's the ambulance service. <laughs> we're, we're getting to you as soon as we can. I need to get out. I'm going to do All right, just, doing All right, just calm down. down. Now, where are you, though? Are you in the house or are you still sitting the on the ledge? The, poli the police are here. The police are with you, are they? Try and keep calm and we will get someone to you as soon as we can, all right? <laughs> OK, can you hear me? Portia, the, the line's still open, so all I can hear is shouting and swearing in the background. Portia is a call supervisor who monitors and advises on the more challenging calls. Hello. Who's that? Daughter. Oh, how old are you, my darling? 50 years old. 50? I'm really scared. No, don't be scared. I'm too hurt. I'm too hurt. So you're saying that your mum hurt you? Go away. No. What, what's happening, my darling? You listen for. How old's your little brother? He's You scared? All right. Shall I stay on the phone with you, my darling? <laughs> she's coming on saying that she's scared. Call her pushed. Her little brother is there, and he's nine. So we've got a nine-year-old on scene as well. I'll ring the police. Hello, it's ambulance control here. You need to pay our police for ambulance. Oh, sorry. Uh, please, please. Please, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this 
fault. They're saying it's your fault. No, don't be scared. I'm sure it's not your fault. I think they've had a lot to drink, haven't they? Your mum said they'd been drinking. I can't breathe. You can't breathe. All right. All right. Try and slow your breathing down, my darling. Try and slow your breathing down. All right. You're all right, my darling. You're going to be okay. Are you calling the police? Trying. Six minutes, I've been waiting now. It's just ringing out. No, all right, you're doing really well. I know it's scary when these kind of things happen, though, isn't it? Just let me know if anything happens then. I'll stay on the phone with you, all right, my darling? <laughs> The police emergency. Hey. Hello, it's ambulance control here. Hello there, ambulance. Hello, can we have your assistance, please? Mm, I'll argue with my mum a lot. Oh, you argue with your mum? Yeah. Yeah, you're 15, though. That's quite normal. Yeah. Isn't it? My daughter's 17 and we argue. It's just one of those mum-daughter things, I think, isn't it? You know, when you argue with your, with your mum? Yeah. Yeah. You've done well to calm her down, like you She's have. a lot better. Your Samaritans is kicking in, isn't it? I was a Samaritan volunteer for probably about 10 years. I think the listening skills with the Samaritans is probably the biggest thing. I think any call that involves children, it can be quite difficult to, you know, kind of contain yourself. All you can do in those situations is just keep reassuring, you know, we're doing our best, we're getting there as quickly as we can. Keep going, keep going, don't give up. Can you hear your brother? How far are you away from him? It's hard not to take some calls home with you. It probably sounds cliche, but you do kind of hug your loved ones a little bit tighter then. Are they still shouting, are they? There are still no ambulances available in the black country. But Louise spots a crew who are dropping a patient at a hospital less than a mile from the overdose call. Five seven, sorry to bother you. I appreciate you trying to offload. Um, have you got an ETC at all, over? Just about to see there. Sounds like you've got something uh, special on the offering. We've got um, adult male that's taken an overdose. Uh, but we've also got children at the address. Uh, we've got a 15-year-old who's come on saying her mum's hurt her and that um, she's scared, and also a younger brother on scene. Yeah, well, you send the details, please. Thank you, I'll resend details. Oh, is that your mum I can hear? Yeah, I think the police are there. The police are there, are they? <laughs> Crew states have arrived on scene, have been told to wait in vehicle until they have calm things down. So the police are there? With police and ambulance now in attendance, the children will be referred to the local council's safeguarding team whilst the overdose patient is given treatment. Sam, the 23-year-old man threatening to jump out of a window, has been waiting for his ambulance for 40 minutes. Paramedics Joe and Sookie have just become free. Sorry, great, thank you. Just let you know. I've spoken with the patient on this one. He's very uh, anxious, very upset. But he, he does need help, this day, over. No worries, mate. We're on our way, over. Thank you. Control standing back. Yeah. Police have been on scene for 15 minutes and have managed to calm Sam down. Morning. Hello. OK, Sam, I'm Sucky. This is Joe. What's gone on today? I just want to end it. OK, what's made you feel like this? It's been going on for about three or four weeks now. All my anxiety levels have just risen and they've been rising and rising and rising and tonight they've just... Blown. We just got to that and point. I've just got to that point where I've said, you know what, fucking hell, dying has got to be fucking easier than this. Mm.
Have you ever done anything like this before? What, when I felt like suicidal. I to kill myself. Yeah. I've had suicidal thoughts, but I've never really wanted to carry them out apart from tonight. Fuck okay. it. Just do it. Never taken any overdoses before, Sam? No. Is that a no? No. No, no I haven't. But I need help. I need <laughs> help. Well, that's a really good step. That's really brave of you, all right? I too. need the help. I need the help. <laughs> <laughs> what we've got, Sam, we've got a team. We're going to get you some help tonight and we'll take you to New Cross Hospital where you will see a psychiatric nurse there. To see you will. Someone. We'll definitely get you some help, okay? All right. Should we get you on the ambulance then, Chick? Yeah. Yeah, if he needs help, he needs help. Okay. Where are we going? You're sitting in the hot seat, Sam. I'm sitting in the hot seat. And I'll tell you what, if I had not rang 999, I would have just been a scatter of bones and blood over that front drive. Well, I'm glad that that's not happened. OK, Sam, you know, you, really. how long has it been since your girlfriend's, like, left? About three weeks. Sorry. How many months pregnant is she? Yeah. I'll show you. This is taken on the 15th of uh, February. That's my baby. Aww. That's my baby. That's, fair, That's my baby. There's not a day that passes that I don't get a mental health job on the ambulance. Men, when they're facing mental health issues and problems and stresses, low moods, they bottle it up and they bottle it up until they actually explode. There's still a lot of stigma and a lot of taboo. You seek help, you're almost weak. And that's not right because we all need help at some point or another in our lives. And to be able to recognise that and be able to ask for help for me, that's such a brave thing to do. My anger definitely steps back to when my mum and dad split up. I resented my mum for it. Mm -hmm. For the lies that I was told for the last two years. How old were you when that happened, Sam? I was 40. Yeah. It was quite a traumatic event for you at that time. Ambulance service is the patient breathing. Yes, she's 50, but she's having spasms of going, right? She's having one out. There's a load of blood coming from the bottom. OK. But she's having yeah. back to bleeding. Yeah, and I was completely freaked when I saw this and thought it was a baby, but it's not. It's her bottom, not her vagina. Yeah. What can you see coming out? All I can say is it looks like her bottom is in labour. Something is trying to come out of her bottom. She hasn't had a period in a while. She has June. Since June. It's eight, nine months ago. Oh, shit. Open your head. Open your head. No, it is. It's a baby. Um, take all that back. It's a baby. It is a baby. There's a head. I can see a head. Oh, my absolute God. <laughs> oh, my baby's out. The baby's out. A girl or a boy? Boy. It's a boy. Okay. Yeah. There, there's an ambulance going on the hunt now. I'll leave you with the ambulance, okay? See you, bye. Wow. Oh my god. She didn't even know she was pregnant. Is it breathing still okay? I think that's the craziest call I've ever took. Joe and Suki are now five minutes from arriving at A&E with their patient, Sam. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. Shit. Oh, my God. Suki. Yes, love. Big accident. What was he doing? Just stay here, yeah, OK? Yeah. Oh. I witnessed it all. Oh. Okay. Hey. All right, guys, just just one minute. I saying that. Get out the car. You calling for another crew? Yeah. Fire as well. 
five three. Yeah, we need. Um, we've just witnessed a really nasty RTC on the Technol Road. There's one car is actually blowing smoke, uh, um, and we need fire service. I'm going to have to have two um, two ambulances, please, if possible. Okay. Yeah. As long as you're all right, I'll get everybody to you as quickly as I can. Yeah, thanks. It's all right. It's a little bit of a nightmare here because it's all happened really quickly. Everyone's quite irate. Um, so, yeah, just as soon as you can, if you don't mind, hon. Right, this RTC is a make ambulances too. They're all rather our right, and the crew witnessed it all happen as well. 4-6, go ahead. 4-6, thanks. Just to let you know uh, that uh, we don't have much of an update at the moment. Um, one car has hit Central Reservation, Bollard. We don't know how many occupants are in the vehicle. Uh, it's just reported as a four-car RTC received. Yeah, received. We'll update you when we make the scene over. Ambulance 4246 and a paramedic officer in a car are immediately dispatched to the crash. But Joel has requested two additional ambulances. This leaves the control centre with one more still to find on a busy Saturday night. I'm struggling to get another vehicle to these. There's nothing. Uh, there's one ambulance and the officer on the way at the moment, and then literally the next available ambulance we'll have to get to them, but there's, there's nothing available at the moment, so it's not a great situation. All right, mate, mate, just let me come there, mate, just in case he's hurt himself. <laughs> mate, are you hurt yourself anywhere? No, I'm not hurt, but to be honest, I want, I'd like to move the car. Hang on, mate, mate, you ain't gonna move that car, right? Mate, mate, you ain't gonna move that car. Hang on, bro, hang on, let me move out the way. Listen, 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 listen. Listen to me, listen to me. Mate, seriously, my name's Sucky. What's your name? Look, look, look over that. No, mate, mate, hang on, give me them keys. No, mate, you're not gonna drive this vehicle. I'm not going. You're not moving that vehicle. Just, just give me the keys, mate, because you're not gonna drive this vehicle. Joe, have you called police, Joe? Joe is attending to a 23-year-old who is trapped in a second car that was struck from behind in the collision. But what, what we've got to do, my, my darling, I can't get you out at the moment, so because the seats are a bit of a mess, but you're OK, and I'm with you. We're going to have to get you out in a second, OK? And we'll get you sorted. The fire are here now. All right, guys. This is the, this is the one I'm a little bit... Because I can't get this girl out of the back. She shook up, but I can't really examine it because I can't get in there. But she's just got pain in her ribs. And, I mean, they've all got, like, neck and back pain, but the problem is it's all happened so quickly. Yeah, all round my neck and my back. Because that's my concern, and that's why I want you to try and stay quite still. With the help of the fire crew, the 23-year-old is freed from the car. Fifteen minutes after he was dispatched, the paramedic officer has arrived to help coordinate the scene. Guys, who was in this vehicle? Who were your friends? Have they hurt themselves? Joe and Suki prioritise the casualties. The driver declines medical attention. Realising the seriousness of the situation, with Joe and Suki's permission, Sam decides to make his own way to A&E with a relative who had been following behind in a car. There are multiple casualties, and having assessed the scene, the paramedic officer updates the control room. Go ahead, Anna. Yeah, look, I have a, a third for this uh, case, please. All my ambulances, three. My ambulances. What do you have that third received? Thanks, mate. Uh, we've got five uh, patients all together. What do you have? Oh, received and understood. Thank you. It's ambulances. Yeah. It's my ambulances, three. Oh. What? You're having a laugh. I'm going. Tell me where I'm going to get three crews from. Right, this could be interesting. Lou, have you, are you stuck in? Um, at the minute, we've got 14 now. I ain't got nothing anyway. Sometimes, I've literally got no crews to send on these jobs. And you have to start shouting round, I'm going to have to pinch so-and-so, and I'm going to have to pinch so-and-so, take them from another area, off another job. But, oh, gosh, it's hard. 
Four two four five. He's just a back. It's an amber backup for extrication. Which one's that one? Sorry. Four two four five. One. It's an amber backup for extrication. Oh, in that case, we'll have him then. Four two four five. Yeah. Right, hang on. Let me. Uh, can you swap them onto that job then? Yeah. That's one crew. Ambulance 4245 has been diverted to the car crash from a job assisting another crew on a lower priority call. But Louise still has one more ambulance to find for this job and there are more life-threatening 999 calls coming in. Where's the patient breathing? Uh, he is uh, complaining of a heart problem. Heart problem. How is he breathing at the moment? Is he gasping? It's not very really good, mate. OK, is he gasping desperately? Are you in the fucking on your... Sir, this is yes. the supervisor. There's no Are need for us. Your... Let me tell you one thing. Anything happens to this chap here, I'm going to come out for you guys first. Right. So chop, chop. We are trying to tell you chop, what chop. you can do to help the patient. Chop, chop, and tell me what you want me to Stop saying chop, chop. He's gone, mate. What do you oh, mean my... he's gone? He's not responding, so come on, please. So, are you telling us he's... I'm telling you to fucking hold you up, man. Right. There's no reason at all. The first available ambulance is sent to the man who's not breathing. But Louise is still one crew short for the car crash. We might control on mobiles and mobiles. First call, we need a third ambulance on an RTC, please. Any vehicle able to clear render aid, please come up, control standing by. 69, did you make a call then, ever? We'll do it if you want us to, right? Okay, yes. Thank you very much. Oh, thank God for that. Thirty-five minutes after the accident happened, three ambulances are on scene. Crews can start transferring casualties to hospital. Thanks, son. Thank you. OK, see you in a bit. You couldn't make it up, could you? And they could have killed an innocent family. They've been and picked their daughter up. All three of those could have been dead because of that. Dickheads. Bunch of dickheads. Awful. Awful. We're going to have that car in our faces. That's all I thought. It's really shook me up. So that RTC that they came across, so they could have killed not only the people in the other car, but the crew, the patient that was on the ambulance as well. It's absolutely awful. See you what, it's drama after drama over here tonight. You need to get her to remove her clothing from her waist down. Can you do that for me? Right, she needs to push. No, 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 she no need to push because she has only back pain. She hasn't got back pain, she's in labour. I'm here to help until the ambulance gets there. Call supervisor Ali is taking the seventh birth call of the shift. The average is just one. You need to look between her legs and see if you can see any part of the baby. Is she having another contraction, another pain now? No, you're not. Right, tell me when she has one and tell her she has to do what her body's telling her to. And so she needs to push, she needs to push, OK? Listen, can somebody go and open the door? Because the ambulance crew should be outside now. Can you see them? Yes, yes. OK, I'll let you go. Thank you very much for your help. Bye-bye. As the bars and clubs close, alcohol-related calls pour in. Ambulance service is patient breathing. I can't really tell she's breathing. She's puking, she's gone freezing cold, pale, she's on the floor, red Is she awake? She's not awake, no, she's asleep. I seriously think she's dying. I'm uh, uh, the girlfriend's passed out outside, walk around, hungry. She's unconscious at the moment. Yeah. 
I'm on the phone to 999. But I'm on the phone to the fucking ambulance of a boyfriend. In Birmingham city centre, the ambulance service has set up a fixed unit around busy bars and clubs. The police have brought in an injured woman. What's happened this evening? Well, obviously, look, with me friends. Yeah. And some hairs out and just started on me. Yeah. So I've had to go back. Yeah. And then before I've looked at my finger, and I was mm. like, oh, my God. Mm. Like, Finger. She's bit your finger. Yeah. Right, what I need to do is, is clean that up so I can see what we're looking at. So if you just put your hand over there, just oh. I'm just going to squirt some water on it and then clean it up. Okay. Right, this might sting a bit, chick. I don't care. Yeah. What was the occasion tonight? Just a drink out with your no, friend? No, I was going to watch the Kaiser Chief. All oh, right. Oh, yeah, the second one on yeah. here tonight from the Kaiser Chief. Just, just let me move your hand. The, the, you've, you've lost you've lost the nail oh. off your finger and you've taken a chunk out the side of your finger. This is just to obviously keep it clean but add a bit of protection to it because that's going to be quite tender. How, how much have you had to drink tonight? Probably more than what we should, but not as much as what we... What you could? Yeah. <laughs> that's fair enough. we just like to like, go out, have a few drinks, and go out, and then we just do that. We're gonna, we're gonna get an ambulance down, darling, and we're gonna get you taken off to hospital. All right. The finger is absolutely. It will. Are you covered for tetanus? It's a human bite, obviously. There's a concern there. So. Bit my fucking finger. What? I don't know. So I've been doing this a lot of years, and I still don't understand why people do things like this. There lies the question, really. The patient will be taken to hospital, where she'll be assessed for plastic surgery. As the end of the 12-hour shift approaches, Team 4 hand over to the day shift. So, have a good shift. Thank you. I will have hand it over to you. 5-3. It's home time now and a little bit of sleep or a lot of sleep before we do it all again tonight. And hopefully tonight will be slightly less dramatic. I hope so, mate, thank you. See you later, have a nice sleep. Good night. Well, thanks for a grueler, Joe. Oh, gosh. Ambulance services, the patient breathing. Um, hi, uh, yeah, he is. He's popped his kneecap out. He did it on Friday and it's done again. All right, what's his address? Sunday, half an hour into the night shift, and a call has come in for a man in Dudley who is in extreme pain. Can I talk to him? Okay, okay. He said he can't talk. He can't can't talk. talk. Is he in yeah. severe pain, yeah? Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, okay. Two ambulances are on scene and they're calling the control room to request support from the doctor on duty. Got on, thanks guys. Um, good request for you. It's a 22 year old male who apparently has got a displaced patella. Uh, two crews in attendance. Um, they have attempted multiple times to reduce with the assistance of morphine and um, entonox and have been unavailable. Apparently the extrication from this address is going to be quite tight and they feel it's unsafe in current conditions. They've requested your support. Um, yeah, all the same. Thanks. So, can you request for a dislocated knee? It's dislocated knee. Two crews there saying that it's uh, a difficult extrication and you can flick it back in. So, you're going to be two fence knocked. I'll be straight yeah. there. She can be the flicker. <laughs> Hi there, hi. We were the second crew on scene. We've got a 22 year old young guy who dislocated his knee in the week he did the scene at hospital. 
basically what's happened is stays beyond the sofa and he's literally dislocated his left knee again. OK. Because if you see the stairs, they're, like, really narrow. OK. So the plan was to get him onto the chair to carry him down. We managed to get him onto the chair and every time we tried to move, he's screaming in absolute agony. And because when you see the stairs and how you get up there, yeah. it's not safe for us okay. to carry him down. So that's really no, that's why fine. we called you. That's fine. Yeah. Hey, As you can see, this is the problem that we've got. Okay. And this is a gentleman. Hi there, hi, hi there. I'm Katie, I'm one of the doctors working with the ambulance service. Alright, I'll talk to you. So this is the problem, he's only had ten of more things. Get you some pain relief. He did this the other day. How about any Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, mate. Okay. You need to take, listen, you need to take that long, slow, deep breaths. And just keep breathing it, okay? The only thing that is going to make it better is to get it back into place, okay? I don't know, it's going to be a bit cruel to be calm. I'm going to need to try and straighten your leg, and it is going to be sore, but if you take deep breaths, uh, Kate okay. is going to flick that back and it'll be done. Okay. Okay. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, listen. Hey, listen. Really deep I know. Okay. Deep breaths, all right? All right, I'm going to take your leg, I'm going to slowly straighten it, all right? <laughs> <laughs> deep breaths. Okay. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Now. Deep breaths. Oh, good. Well done. Well done. Well done. Right. There you go. What we need to do is we're just going to try and just hold this in position, OK? Don't bend it again. Yeah, should we splint it? That'd be great. Well done. Oh, we've done so well. It's hot. Is that really painful? Second time this week. Four, oh, it's the fourth time. Fourth Friday. When I got into the hospital on Friday, a doctor popped it in, and as soon as he pulled it down, it popped back out, so he popped it back in. You got home, and then yesterday morning, trying to get up that step, it popped in, and then... We've all popped out and then straight back in, so we don't think we'll think of it. I just gone oh. to the sofa and day move again. <laughs> to be fair, this is the first time I've been off the sofa in about <clears throat> 38 hours. <laughs> well done. This, so this is going to make your legs straight. Yeah. Okay. And then once this, once this is no. tight, then we'll we'll be able to, you'll be able to move. So it's going to go really stiff, OK? Yeah, like... There you go. So we're just going to lift your leg up. There you go. Well done. I don't know how I'll get down the steps, We've though. got lots of us. When we get to the steps, you can potentially go down on your bottom Bum. and we can support your leg. Just three, keep this one, leg two, three. straight. Pushing your good leg. That's it. Well done. Keep the leg forward. Well done. <sighs> Brilliant. OK, we'll hop down to the first one, but then we'll sit up, sit your bottom down. And so then we'll slide your bottom down. dangling over there. So. Did you go? Oh, you can get this out. Sure. Well done. Now sit your bum down. Sit your bum down. That's it. That's it. There you go. That's great. Good man. <sighs> OK. So, yeah, that's fine. What you got? Another step there, mate. Stand up if you can. Keep going backwards. Keep going backwards. Back as well. just support that leg for you. Well done. Oh. There you go. Okay. Oh, well done. Awesome. Good work, mate. Okay. Brakes off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. The patient, James, will be taken to hospital for x-rays. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? No. They're not breathing? No. Who is it that isn't breathing? Is it your mum or your dad or who is it? It's my auntie. Your auntie, OK, look. Get right by your auntie, can you hear me? Hello? She's saying her auntie's not breathing. A call has ended abruptly for a female who is reported to have stopped breathing. 
there are no ambulances available within five miles of the patient. But crew 4141 are on their way to a man who has fallen. It's a lower category call, so they're diverted. 41, thank you. Possible arrest. I uh, believe uh, it is a child caller. So I'm just awaiting further info. Yeah, OK, thank you. Thank you. I'll call her back. Hello. Listen, stay on the line. Is your auntie not breathing? Oh, she's talking to you now. Is she awake? Yeah. She is. Right, we're organising help for you then, OK? Can you put her on the phone for me, please? OK, she's on the phone now. Hello, love, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, I think I just left. That sounded very much like your voice. Hello? Which from? Every time I asked to try and speak to the adult, it sounded like the child. <sighs> it might be genuine, they might be scared, you don't know, do you? So. The crew are there now. Go on. Yeah, we've just got this address, knocked on, um, and all the hands have said, she's not called for an ambulance. That's all we see, thank you. So, does it like a hoax? They've been diverted off another call that's been waiting for 40 minutes already. They've been diverted off that to someone that might not even be real. Even though the team suspect the call is a hoax, they can't work on that assumption. Supervisor Porsche calls the mobile phone provider to obtain the address registered to the number that made the call. Hi, I need subscriber details from her mobile telephone number, please. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a landline as well registered? OK. So that's lovely. You've been a great help. OK. Thank you. Bye. For one, for one, we've managed to get subscriber details not too far, so I'll send the job through to you if you can head round there and see uh, if anyone there requires an ambulance. Yeah, that's fine with us. Thank you. While crew 4141 go to check the new address, there are 12 patients across the region waiting for an ambulance, with a new 999 call coming in every 20 seconds. Just repeat the location for me. This library at Burton on Trent. So there's a gentleman that's just had a fit, is that what you're saying? And somebody's been assaulted? I can't hear you because everybody... Okay, move else. away from where all the noise is. Is he conscious now? He's conscious. He is conscious. His legs been shaking. He's, so is he still shaking now, then, sir? Yes. He's still shaking. Don't we trying to get him sorted out? Crew 4141 have just arrived at the registered address of the suspected hoaxer. Yeah, 4141, have you located anything at this address? The curtains are all open, it's in pitch darkness. Uh, a house appears to be unoccupied. That's all we see, thank you. Rich, they've been to that address, there's no one in the property. It's empty. Hello, ambulance service. What's the matter? What's happened? You know, I've been waiting for a toilet roll on. I put one on and I've cut myself. So what, what has happened to you? You've, you've cut yourself on the toilet roll holder? Yeah. What we've done, we've assessed your symptoms uh, and an emergency ambulance isn't needed at the moment, but I know you're in pain, you want to get this seen to. What we'd advise you to do is to get yourself up to the nearest A&E Within the hour, can you go to the nearest A&E? No, I'm more bus pass does start till half past nine. Your bus pass doesn't kick in till half past nine. As the Sunday night shift enters the early hours, call numbers plunge. One in three are now for elderly patients. Is the patient breathing? Yes. What's the main reason for the call, please? One is in the lifeline of an eight-year-old female. Yeah. She's pressed the emergency button just now, and she's absolutely hysterical. Okay, right. Thank you. Still going to ask some help for her. Hi, 
with an eight-year-old Sheila has activated a care line because she's got severe abdo and back pain. We'll go and have a look and see what we can do for her. Oh, bless her. 64 ambulances are currently available across the region. Paramedic crew Maria and Ungi are the nearest to the elderly patient. Arrive scene mode activated. Hello. What's been happening tonight then, Sheila? I've got you just tying on my shoes on my back. When did it start? It started. About 12 o'clock. About 12 o'clock. Yeah. Have you ever had anything like this before? No, I've had it before. Please help me. OK, sweetheart. Is it in your chest right now? No, no, it's in my back. In your back? Yeah. Right there. Or maybe in the other side. OK. Sheila, have, have you been in this chair all night? Yes. Yeah, yeah. OK. Do you normally sleep in this chair? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you have any family? No, not me. No other relatives at all that you keep in touch with? Only their next door, but else. Just your neighbours? How, how many times a day do the carers come in? They just come like once in a night time, and they'll be back in the morning, as far as I know, I'm not sure. OK. Just, I'm just a little bit worried that you're sleeping in a chair. And know. Uh, that bed's a bit cold up there. That's why I don't sleep on it. OK. Have you not got heating in here? Let's just turn most of the radiators off. Oh. We're just getting you a cup of tea and we'll get you some pain relief. I don't have no sugar in between. No, no sugar, no okay. sugar okay. Take a nice big deep breath in. I'm a Sikh by faith. For me and my upbringing, anybody that's elderly is, is, is looked after by family. These people that are on their own, and that is quite heartbreaking because they're at the end of their lives and they've got nobody apart from us coming to help them, which is quite sad. It's quite sad. I mean, if that was my grandmother, my grandfather, I'd be absolutely mortified. It's the neglect of it. Graham and his wife, Jill, have been regularly checking in on Sheila over the past few years. I live three doors there now. I was the first one to get involved at the rails fitted for her before she was bad and alarm, little alarm units put on the window because she's been broke into two or three times and uh, attacked in the house. The window's broken in that room. I told him about that weeks ago. Nobody's done nothing. But social services, they just don't seem to be really caring for her. It's wrong, totally. Sheila? Sheila, I'm going to pop you down to the hospital. Oh. Should we get you onto the ambulance? That's I'm it. coming towards. Can we just sure. pull you back a bit? Yeah. She said she's lost a lot of weight. Right. There we go. Oh. All right, Sheila, just relax. Oh, God. Sheila, can I have this arm? Just relax that arm a second. <laughs> Nearly done, Sheila. Sheila, look at me, Sheila. Sheila. I oh, know, listen, Sheila. we're going to give you something for the pain, OK? But we need to get this Sharp in. Stop scratch. No, no, Sheila, no, Sheila, Sheila, Sheila don't just move keep the arm. still. Sheila, okay. Sheila, just relax, you're OK? I can't. Just, just bear just with us, OK? Now, yeah. How long have you lived in that house, Sheila? Oh, a long time. How many, how many years is a long oh, time? Oh, hey? oh, I can't say this in that long. OK. Here we go. We will put a safeguard and referral in for that, but um, it's a shame there's nothing more we can do. You know, you wouldn't allow that if that was your relative. You wouldn't even allow that if you was your enemy. It's just, it's just the failure of the system. Sheila, yeah. this is just a bit of paracetamol, OK? OK. This should work quite quickly, all right? I'll get rid of that pain. Have people spoken to you about 
possibly go into to full time care? Yeah, but I don't want that. Okay. okay. That's my own. I know it is. I know it is. And my old sleeping they we live there. Yeah. And I, I don't want to live there. I know you're helping me in this family. Yeah. But I want to be back in the own bed. Understandable. Own That's own. understandable, yeah. Yeah. Okay. At the minute, you've, you've got carers coming in twice a day, haven't you? That's good, yeah. That's yeah. Good. I'm going to suggest to social services that we up that to four times a day if we can. Okay. Someone in to give you help with, with cleaning and looking after the house as well. Somewhere deep inside, something's got to hold on you. And it's pushing me aside, see it stretch on forever. When I was trained to be a paramedic, I thought, right, okay, it's going to be exciting, blue lights everywhere, saving lives all the time. But sometimes the hardest jobs are the small jobs where you lift up the little old ladies that fall on the floor. It's just that small difference where you're a lifeline to somebody. You'd better be home soon. We'll get you sorted, don't worry. Okay. A couple of bumps. We, we might get an hour with a patient. But after that, we have to leave them and never see them again. But you still know that they're still going to be in that situation. But I think if you ask any paramedic if they could put someone's life right, they'd love to do it. It's hard to know that there's only so much we can do. Next on Ambulance. My two-year-old daughter, she's really scaring me. The help's already on the way to you. I'm so scared, baby. Oh, my God. So what's happened to little one?